I'm Ian Sanders, author of Juggle, Rethink Work, Reclaim Your Life. And for the latest in the series of the Juggle Tapes interviews, I'm here to meet Harry Dernick. Now, Harry actually started his career in the US Air Force, flying jets in Vietnam. But he's had a very distinguished career in drinks marketing, working with brands like Budweiser, Gallo Wines, Sol Beer, and most recently was CEO of Red Bull, where he transformed the company, creating a brand now that everyone knows about. He now juggles a business portfolio that includes working with a technology startup, a carbonated drinks company, plus he's even got a farm in Suffolk where he farms livestock. I'm going to go and meet him and find out how he manages to juggle all that. So Harry, thanks for joining me today. You've come a long way from Chicago and the US Air Force through drinks marketing through to, through to where you are now. Through all that career, I'm really interested to know, have you, have you had a, back, a big plan? Was there kind of this strategy or is it kind of you made it up as you went along? Um, you know, life is kind of like a flower, uh, like a rose, it just opens and you, it just unfolds. And no, I haven't had a plan. I mean, I have, I've had dreams right. and ambitions and, and, uh, and concepts of where I want it, but no, no, no absolute plans. Not sure. And, um, and I, I think it's been more exciting and more fun that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. The goals have been important, though, because goals, goals yeah. are very focused to, to achieve the success you've had, and the, yeah. the goals help. Goals are important. I mean, uh, in the beginning, I, you know, I wanted to fly airplanes. That's all I ever wanted to do uh, since, I, since the age of about six. And uh, so when the opportunity came, I went out and took some private lessons, and then I got into, I realized how expensive it was, and, and also the kind of equipment you could fly, and so I joined the Air Force, or the, I went into uh, the Air Force ROTC program at university. And you spent some time in Vietnam. I did. Um, I had uh, two all expenses paid trips, um, and uh, it, was, uh, it was really enlightening. It was, it was, it was something that really a foundation. Um, I, I don't know what else you could say about it. Would I do it again? No. Am I mm -hmm. glad I did it? Yeah. Sure. One of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And what about drinks? Because Beverages, whether wine, beer, carbonated drinks, Red Bull, I mean, that's, you know, that's always been part of your DNA. I mean, that's always yeah, been I, it was, it was funny, but I, I never, you know, I never thought about getting into drinks. Um, when I, in the Air Force, it soon became apparent to me that, you know, war was not a long-term business um, that, that I wanted to be in. And, uh, and so I got out. And when I got out, I was kind of stumped. So I said, I'm going to go to school, go back to school. So I went to graduate school. Right. And I got an MBA in marketing and finance. Okay. And uh, during that time, um, I opened my eyes. I took lots of different interviews. And the one that really appealed to me was this, was Anheuser-Busch. Had a great little career. Brought out a brand called Bud Light. Uh, I was the brand manager. Really, the brand manager is August Bush. I was his assistant. It was really wow. exciting to get involved that way. And, uh, but in the middle of it, I realized that I was probably more valuable in other places. And I got headhunted and uh, went out and met Ernest Gallo. And uh, he and I. Um, really liked each other, so uh, I went to work out there. It is interesting that I was working you know, in businesses that were dominated by this family, by right. these families. So first of all, it was, it was Bush, um, and then the Gallows. Uh, although one was public corporation, the other was private. Um, it was really interesting. You get a real feel for the, for the uh, uh, rhythm of the business sure. and where, it, you know, where it's going and the history of it. It's only been now five years, six years in the business. And the opportunity came to come over to Europe to work for Budweiser again. And uh, I thought, you know, why not? Mm. To get into a train and get on a treadmill and to continue to work within a, in, a, in a certain environment, I, I just can't imagine doing that. It's not sure. boring, uh, eventually. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, uh, there's too much out here. No, absolutely. So you moved on to other things. You came to Europe. Yeah. And, and one of the next big brands you were involved with was, amongst others, was, was Sol Beer. Yeah, after I, when I came over here with Budweiser, and, uh, and after about five years, uh, August and I got into a, uh, a disagreement, and he fired me. And so at that time, I said, do I stay here or do I go back to the States? And uh, by that time, I was in love with this girl here and decided to stay and uh, bought a business. Mm -hmm. And in that business was a brand called Sol Beer. And uh, I had... Uh, seen how Corona had marketed themselves in the United States, obviously, and just had a feel that this was right. And it was. And uh, it became a real phenomenon. Sure. With the lime in it. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. 
And what do you put that down to, that success? You came along, here was a brand that you had to, for some vision, you'd seen what mm. happened with Corona, but you know, we, we, no one knew about it, and here was an opportunity. What was, what I, was, what was that thing that, you know? There, there, there always has appealed to me about, you know, there are products and brands, mm. and uh, a product does not equal a brand, a brand does not equal a product. Right. Consumer is the only game in town. Mm. It's not about how to sell it into stores. It's not about how to package it so it wins awards. It's not about advertising that makes everybody tingle. Uh, it's about, basically, that product must have some differentiable qualities. In it. Or you, you're just, you know, sure. you're, you're just rowing uphill. When I was at Red Bull, we used to have a, a motto. Every single person is involved with the consumer, from the people who, I, I wanted the people who swept the floors, uh, you know, to, to understand that they were, who they were sweeping them for. They weren't for us. Hmm. We could wait around and all that stuff all day long, but it was for the people who came in to see us. It was, it was our image, it was our projection of who we are. Others uh, reacted with the consumer because they were salespeople and they were out talking to the likes of Sainsbury's and Tesco's. And you know, I said, you're not selling. Whatever you do, you're not selling to Tesco. You're not selling to Sainsbury. What you're doing is using them to reach the consumer. With Red Bull, that was an amazing story because you, you mm. came into that business when it was you know, not known at all. Now yeah. look at it, you know, I just walked, through the city and walked along Lombard Street and there's these guys walking to work, you know, with, yeah. a, with a rebel. And I'll tell you, it, it really, it, it is, yeah, it gives me great, great, great satisfaction to see how successful it's been. Um, you, first of all, though, you started with a really good product, unique product, one that, and one that nobody knew that they needed. Now, yeah. I just, I absolutely adore this. And, you know, Dietrich Mateschitz had a, uh, um, had a saying right at the beginning. Uh, somebody said to him, well, where's the market for this? He said, there, is one. there isn't one, I'm gonna make We're it. We're gonna make it. I just, right. you know, it's, the, it's probably hmm. the one, the, the single best statement that I ever heard him make. It, when I started, they had sold three million cans in, uh, in 18 months, and uh, in the first month that I was in, first two months I was in, we picked up more product out of the trade. It was sitting on really? in, in cash and carries than we sold. So from that inauspicious beginning, uh, 12 years later, we had sold 2.1 billion cans. <laughs> Uh, made 455 million pounds in profit, in contribution wow. to profit, and had an organization of 160 people who are probably recognized as the best marketers, best marketing team in the United Kingdom. Um, also, a pretty good bunch of folks. So, yeah, it was <laughs> a real good, it was a real interesting odyssey, and one that, uh, again, I learned from all the way along. I, I learned a lot during that time. I learned a lot about not dominating an organization from the standpoint of, you know, this is my idea, do this, do this, do right. this, do this. It's about generating their ideas and, mm. and getting a broader perspective uh, on things. And, and presumably, uh, sorry to interrupt, but presumably also about, about occupying a niche. The importance of a niche is, uh, is so, so ingrained in me now. It's, it's almost that you, know, you want to start a new category each time. You want to be so different that you have invented this space. Most people go to the press and they think PR, let's get my name in the paper, let's get all this. And, and, the, and the journalists hate it. You know, when they come to them with this story and they go, yeah, you know, you and your, you and your mother and that little group of people would love this story, but nobody, who's that? Who cares? <laughs> but when you've got a new category, you ask really interesting questions. Um, you, can, you can begin to talk about the category rather than yourself. And if there's one thing that Red Bull taught me, it is if you have to talk about yourself in marketing, boy, A, you're boring, and B, you're just yesterday's news. So you spent a lot of your career, you know, very focused doing one thing, building these brands mm. with enormous success. Now you find yourself with a, with a broader portfolio where you're involved in a technology startup, carbonated drinks, mm. you've got the sparkling vodka. Uh, here you've also got an organic farm up in Suffolk. You know. yes. How do you find that going from you know, being very focused on one thing to juggling that portfolio where you've got quite a few different business interests at the same time? Is that, is that, is that very different for you because you've always had that singular focus to now having that plurality? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, I, I think that the most difficult thing is managing time and, uh, and balancing and you know, making sure that you're doing justice to each one of them. What you can do is you can find the people within that organization and instill them with the understanding, the knowledge, the passion, the, 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 you know, the attitude of this is a great concept and let's move forward. Um, so yeah, I, I, find, I find it uh, it's fascinating. I, I like the, the, the variable nature of what I do now. Um, and, I, and I like the, you know, it, just because I've been in drinks all my life doesn't mean that, uh, that I, can't, um, I can't have a, a good business feeling for cars. I mean, I'm consulting with Nissan in India. 
Wow. Uh, they're introducing, uh, they're, they're building a factory in 2010, it'll be complete, and they're about to enter into it the first time. I think the other thing is, you know, there's a recession out there, and I mm. think people that mix things up and have a lot more, you know, multi-dimensional talents yeah. are going to be, you know, going to be more enterprising, because whatever the pessimism is, and I, th I think in this market, I'm interested to know what you think, mm. you know, good ideas still prevail. You know, if you've got a good business idea, and maybe if you've got more than one skill set and more than one talent in your, in your toolbox, yep. By the very nature, you're going to be more, you know, more enterprising. I think recessions are when uh, are when big ideas and good ideas are best. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you start something new, you don't need everybody mm -hmm. to jump in and buy your product. You need, first of all, one, and then five, and ten, sure. and twenty, and fifty, and you need to pay attention to those small groups, and you you need to build from inside. Um, that's the only time you can take to put that attention is during a recession. And what about the organic farming? Is that a, is that well, a hobby or is that a business? <laughs> I, 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 you know, over time, I have discovered how to make a small fortune in farming. We've got kids. We decided, hey, look, we're going to do some farm. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to do rare breeds because there's no, you know, I can't get into business with the big guys. I can't do what they do, and that's one thing that uh, that's one thing that I really did learn all the way down the line. Um, you can't get ahead by following what other people have done. And I used to, you know, say, you know, if, if you're behind somebody and you do exactly what they do, how do you get ahead of them? Mm. You've got to do something different, get out of the slipstream in order to get around mm. them. We got, uh, we got special breed cattle, um, Herefords, uh, Red Angus, uh, I was right, yes, I was raising Red Bulls. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then we did, uh, we've got Settleback um, pigs and uh, Berkshire. Now the Berkshire pig, there's only 400 Berkshire pigs in the world. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really kind of, Kind of fun, um, and uh, we've got some special sheep, and you know we call the farm E A E I O. Do you ever get frustrated and think like you're going back to the farm tomorrow and think, you know what, I'm going to wipe the slate of everything else and I'm just going to do this? You know? Well, yeah, I, and a couple of a couple of times I really do, but you know then I've got some fairly you know just like in the businesses, these businesses I'm working at, um, you know there are people that work on that farm every day, including my wife. Really? Who, yeah, she's the farmer now, and uh, you know she's a city kid as well. She's taken to it really incredibly well. What about the whole family thing? Because you know you're you're in London some days of the week. Yeah. I mean, how do you how do you find that whole thing? You've got you've got two two daughters, is it? I'm going to try in the next six months. I'm going to build an office over a barn out there, and I'm going to really try to spend four days a week. Out and out there, and see if I can make all of these wonderful communications abilities, you know, mm. come to life. Because, I mean, with the computer and with Skype and with all sure. these, you know, I mean, it's, it's so much easier. But, mm. you know, I'll tell you what, this is an old, this is an old set of, you know, <laughs> rule, you know, set, you know, trying to, with these yeah, new yeah. rules, it's, it's not easy to, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to change. I walked away from a job with Red Bull, like I did with Gallo, like I did with, with Budweiser, kind of at the top of my game. Mm. Um, and why? Uh, and could have just had a really nice, easy life. And, and I walked away to get involved with all this. Why? I guess it's, you know, I, I like to create. Mm. Um, I like to see newness. I like to see new things built. Sure. Um, I hate stagnation, and I don't want to do the same thing. I don't want to wake up tomorrow morning and have the world look exactly like it did. You know, I, I, I just couldn't be in, in a Truman world. No. Um, and that's and the joy of juggling. It comes it's with its a, challenges. It's the but, joy of but, juggling, and you know what? It's also the opportunity every once in a while to drop a ball. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah. that's, in, in some way, that's the fascination. You know, if, if, if every time somebody picked up those balls and did this and never dropped one, where's the drama? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, where's life? One of the things that I, I really believe in that, you know, people can't afford to fail. Mm. You know, failure's not fun, but it's character building if you do it in the right way, if you're putting the things together the right way. And if you're in a business, if you're in a situation where you can't fail, then you're not living. Mm. That's uh, all part of life. Yeah. Hey, Ari, thanks a lot. That's great. That's great Cheers. Yeah.